Hey, how's it going? And today we're taking a look at procedural content generation in Unreal Engine 5.3. And this, you can really think of this just as a scattering tool. I did another tutorial on how to make a scattering tool and this is a lot simpler. Really all it is is what we call instancing, but in Unreal Engine, I guess I like to call it procedural content generation and we do have to do a restart for this before i started this i actually wanted to talk a little bit about the assets because we we're going to do some trees but let's go ahead and start this we're going to go into the third person template and i'll just leave it called my project 7 and we do want starter content with this and we just go create i've seen some other tutorials and they start with the assets already in there but then they don't always explain where do they get those assets from and some of the assets look good but then sometimes the assets don't look so good and i also wanted to talk about that let me just do this real fast let's go to window load default and then we'll go content drawer and dock this that's how i like to have it set up okay so what we're going to do is let's talk about the assets so i'm going to use a tree in this i'm just going to go into the content level here We've got grass in the starter content, so that's what we're going to use from there. But let's just briefly go into the library. Every month, Epic Games gives away free for the month, and I've been doing this consistently almost for two years. And you can see the assets that I've collected over, not just from free for the month, but but also if I see something that's free, I'll get, I maybe out of all these plugins, I've bought like four of them. <laughs> and other than that, I get everything that I can for free. And gradually what you'll find is over time, you're gonna have this massive library of assets that you can use for almost anything. Visual effects, all kinds of props. It's, it's absolutely insane. And they're all for free and they're all yours to keep forever. So don't forget to take advantage of that free for the month. The reason I mention that is there's this one I have in here. I didn't even know I had it in here called Realistic Forest Pack. And it was free because I got it free for the month. And there's a lot of nice trees in there. And then there's also one here called Stone Pine Forest. And it has a lot of nice trees in there. So I have plenty of trees, but thinking that these are now paid assets. So you'd have to pay for them. I think this is about $20, $25 for each one of them. But there is one asset that's free that does have a tree in there if you wanted to follow along. And that's Infinity, Infinity Blades Grassland. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that to the project. It's not a very big file either, so that's a plus. So... We'll go add to project, my project seven and add. And like I said, it, it transfers over really quick. So that takes care of our assets. If we think about what procedural generation is, it, in this case, it's taking one asset and it's mass reproducing it. The quality of that initial asset is really important. It literally is magnified by 10, 100, maybe even a thousand. So putting a little effort into your initial asset is really important. So I wanted to take a minute to talk about that before we get into procedural content generation. Here we've got the folder with infinity blades and there's our starter content. We won't get our starter content until the very end. But here if I click on infinity blades, grasslands I guess, and I go trees, you'll see we have this, a tree comes up and it's this one. There's a smaller one that doesn't look quite as good. And this is a cherry tree. I can just drag it onto the scene to have you look at it. If we come down here and look at this thing, it's okay. It's it seems kind of low poly. It's you know, it's a basic kind of illusion of a tree. It's not super great, but it's enough to play around with. But notice that it's moving. And it's almost like it's having a spaz or it's in high winds or something, but I, I don't like that. So that's something that I think we should take care of before we go to mass produce it, because I think it's just crazy to have it looking like that. What we're gonna do is fortunately, it's not that hard to do. And so I think it's worth taking a couple of minutes to fix this. If we go onto the tree here, that with it selected in the scene, you can see there's two elements. The motion that you see is coming through the elements. Some of these trees that you'll download, they'll have three elements and all three elements are contributing to the motion that you'll see. In this case, it's just the leaves. So if I double click here on the material, on the element, let me just go ahead and dock this. You can see the material right here spazzing out. And if we look here on the graph, this is just a single vector value. It's not a parameter. We can adjust this here, but that's really not the best way to do it. So what we want to do is create a material instance out of this material and that's not hard to do. So we're gonna press S as in Sierra on the keyboard and left click. And then we've got a parameter that we can adjust and we'll just call this wind value. And then all we're gonna do is just delete this node here 
and then we're just going to plug it in here and here and its default value was 0.5 but if I click on it I'm just going to set it because I've tested this see with no value in it look the trees motion is perfectly still but it'd be nice to have a little motion so let's just type in 0.15 and see there we have this much more subtle motion that's a lot better for our purposes so we're just going to go apply and save just like that then we'll come back into the third person map and then on our material which we can think of almost as our mass material we're just going to go right click and create a material instance of it and we're just going to call this mi underscore cherry cherry tree and then all we have to do from there is grab it well let's click into it real fast and you'll see right up here if we check this box this gives us access to that value that we can change later if we want to it's very easy to change this way and the last thing we got to do is just substitute this in for the master material over here and now we have this really nice if I look at the tree you'll see it looks a lot better without that spastic movement so now we've got our asset and we're ready to start replicating I can go save all now the first thing the very first thing that we got to do is we've got to restart we got to do a restart so we got to come into plugins we're going to go to right here and we're going to search for procedural content generation framework this one right there and we simply just restart and it just takes a second to load back up so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch levels because this isn't a very good level for us to do our work in so we're going to come up here and go new level and we're going to do a basic level and go create and the first thing you want to do is click on that player start and maybe bring it up a little bit more now what we're going to do is for this PCG to work we actually have to have a landscape this is just another static mesh that won't work so with the floor selected go ahead and delete it and then we're going to come up here to the mode our modes and we're going to choose landscape and it has default settings for a basic landscape right now and so we'll just go ahead and accept those and go create and now we've got a landscape now one of the tools is activated as soon as we come in so let's just get out of landscape mode so we don't accidentally mess with anything now we can click this player start and make sure that it's not beneath the horizon okay so now we're really ready to get started we got our landscape we got our materials we're ready to go and I don't know how long it took maybe 10 minutes but you got to spend some time in the front end I think to make this a nice effect so what we're going to do is we're just going to right click and now you'll see because we have the plugin we have this option for PCG and we're just going to go PCG graph we'll just leave it called new PCG graph we're going to double click into it and this is actually pretty straightforward there's not a lot to this there's only three nodes that we need so first we're going to expand this node drag out of landscape and search for something called the surface sampler and this only works on landscapes and you have all these options here available but we're not going to be adjusting all of these and if we click on it we have some density settings and things like that but to be able if I come back in here real fast if I come back in here I can drag my PCG graph into the scene but you'll notice we don't see anything so what we have to do is come back in here and with this selected we can just click debug or we could have also hit D on the keyboard and if we come in this is basically a representation of all the instances these are what I call them instances and these are all just stand-ins basically for our meshes that we're going to be putting in so it gives you an exact idea of where things will be placed if we were to swap in a mesh right now and so you can just look at this right away and figure is that too crowded is that not crowded and what you can do is if we undock this you can pl actually play with the value over here a little bit so that's on point one let's say we do 0 0.05 make it a little less maybe a little less than that point zero two maybe just like that you know it just depends on what your look you're going for and so let's go back into this graph in fact let's go ahead and just dock it again 
if we click unbounded, it takes over the entire surface area. Now we're going to search for something called transform points. And the only reason we're getting this is to add some variability. Because if we were to just bring in our meshes right now, they'd all be they'd all be the same size and then all be facing the same direction. So what we want to do is just mix things up a little bit. So here we can just go type in one tab, negative one tab and type in something like 90 like that. And then this controls the size of the trees. So here you might want to do 0.4. These are all locked. So you change one, they all change. And we can change this to 0.7. So we have a range of values to choose from. And then after that, all we've got to do is drag off of here. And it's, I believe it's called static mesh spawner, this thing right here. And we're just going to plug this, open that up and just plug this in here. And with this selected, I am only going to add in just one mesh. But if you came in here, as many meshes as you wanted to add, you would just add extra elements. So in this case, I'm just, I just want to add one element. But if I wanted to add more meshes, I would add, I would add them right here. Right here under mesh, we're just going to look for that tree. And we're just going to search for static mesh cherry tree. It already has the material instance attached to it. And believe it or not, that's all we have to do. And if I close this or just go in here, you'll see we've got all these trees. Now the the debug markers are still on there, so we can just come back into here and turn that off. And if we come in, you'll see we've got all these trees now of varying sizes. And like I said, if we come on here on this one and click Unbounded, it's actually going to fill up the entire area here trippy huh and then the last thing we can do to kind of finish things off is we can come up to content here and just search for grass and if we click the landscape I believe it is and just come here to material ground grass or if I got landscape selected let's see landscape material I can just drag it probably easier just to drag it over here and that should add the grass. I'm not sure why it's not. There it goes. Okay. And then if we hit play, we've got this incredible environment. It looks like an orchard is really what it looks like. And that's one easy way to get started. We can even go control L. Let me go control L and just lighten up the, the mood here a little bit with some cool shadows. And then we'll go play and then we have this incredible environment look at all those shadows what a trip huh so look how easy it was to just create this massive environment so anyway i hope you found this helpful take care have a great day and i'll talk to you next time